Okay, my bench is a little crowded with junk right now. Okay, but this wheel right here is a wheel that I've been using. It's on bearings to test various magnetic arrangements. And what I've done here is I've attempted to recreate the Storm toy, which is really a little bit more than a toy. Um, we have six magnets arranged. Three of them ultimately have the north pole facing up. Three of them have the south pole facing up. And I'm not quite sure which pole I have facing up, uh, facing towards them, but I have a magnet hinged on just a couple of washers. Okay. I want to make this as crude as possible to demonstrate the feasibility of this device. And there's a very small range of motion where I, where I reach past I don't know if you can detect how small, but this thing is continuing to rotate clockwise. And I'm simply giving this thing a tiny, tiny bit of motion and very little effort on the back of this lever back here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, sure. You can see that fine. Okay. So I move it up and it goes one way. And if I keep it, keep the momentum going with the flywheel effect, and I'm moving it in an exaggerated fashion just to show you. But once it's once it reaches the transition point, let me see if I can figure this out. Okay, I'm, I must have the the south pole facing the rotating wheel because it is attracting the <coughs> north pole magnet indicated by red on the top. So. The pole of this magnet right here, facing this way, is the south pole. And if I just move it past the transition point, again, it's very easy to get the, the flywheel started. And I'm barely moving it with extremely little effort. Clearly, the output energy of the flywheel exceeds what I'm putting in get this thing to move. And the very next step is simply to close the loop. What I plan to do is, is take this flat bar of metal, which is steel, soft rolled steel, rotate it and create a flat surface with two electromagnets, actually two permanent magnets, one on the top and one on the bottom, so that it will transition. And what will create transition effect is an electromagnetic pulse on the on the arm itself, timed precisely with this wheel to create the direction of motion that I desire. And that will effectively close the loop if I attach a generator to the flywheel and use it to power the circuitry that creates the pulse to transition. See? You can barely detect the motion in my finger. I'm just moving it literally. Maybe God, the actual actual movement of the of the magnet is probably about two to three millimeters. Tops. Tops. That's how rapid the transition effect occurs as I'm moving it through as I'm moving it through the motion this way in front of the flywheel. It really is amazing. All right, here we are several hours later. Uh, you can see I've added to the test fixture several gears from which we can extract rotary motion from the rotor of the Storm magnetic motor. Quite a bit of friction to overcome here. It doesn't rotate very long at all. Comes to a stop very quickly, you'll see. All it is is to get a look at that. These uh, these gears simply rotate on screws that are screwed into wood. And uh, the bearings literally are the plastic against the wood. So there's, a, like I said, a considerable amount of friction to overcome. 
the standard magnet moves up and down in one plane at right angles to the rotor. And the rotor over here, you can see, has the gear at the bottom which meshes to the gear inside the spindle. So I'm just going to set this down into place on top of the spindle. ratio between the rotor and this last gear on the end here is about right, exactly four and a half revolutions for every revolution of the rotor. In the end, I will be taking a permanent magnet DC motor, meshing the gears to the final output gear here, where a DC current will be generated to power electronics that will control the motion of the scatter magnet up and down in a switching fashion and close the loop on the Storn motor. So we can get this one started. And just like this afternoon, I'm able to get the thing started and rotating very, very easily. You'll notice that each of the rotor magnets has had assembled to it plates of steel top and bottom to concentrate the magnetic lines of force so that the standard magnet can inter interact with them and create more torque than I had this afternoon. timing exactly right and keep it going. But as you can see, the assembly is easily maintaining a unidirectional motion. Assuming, assuming I keep my timing, there we go. Overcoming a considerable amount of friction, which makes it very difficult to argue that there is no useful work being done. Certainly there is, and it is with minimal effort putting the scatter magnet up and down in relation to the rotor. There you have it. We'll uh, keep you posted and let you know what happens when we close the loop. Hopefully it will sustain its own motion and generate excess, excess energy that can be used as useful output.